You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for May 25th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we are recording this a little earlier than usual. And, well, we're moving along and we'll see what happens. There are certain circumstances that we want. And, frankly, I think we'll get those circumstances. And if we don't have the podcast, and, frankly, it has a chance to be a great podcast, a great podcast for Springfield and a great podcast for the world. If it doesn't happen, maybe it'll happen later. Maybe it'll happen at a different time. But we'll see. We're talking. The podcast is scheduled, as you know, for May 25th from here in the middle of middle America and whether or not it happens, you'll be knowing pretty soon, but we're talking right now and we'll see what happens. It's the professional lab of the drift class at blue gal. My IQ dropping um, exponentially just as I was saying. That. As the president of the United States, yeah. asterisk, asterisk is speaking, yeah. you feel your IQ dropping, yes. I do. I do. And, and we're recording this. We are, in fact, recording this uh, on a Wednesday, not on Friday, because we have travels. Right. We have to go see my two sisters. And uh, I want to thank everyone who said nice things about my sister to me over the course of the yes. past couple of years. She is. Yes. Uh, as many of you know, um, dealing with cancer and uh, is is hanging in there. Is doing pretty well, yeah. I would say. All things considering, <laughs> she's yeah. she's uh, going to be with us this weekend, and uh, we're certainly she's in our thoughts all the time. But she is. thank you she is. for all of your kind thoughts about her. And so as as you listen to this, we're probably somewhere in Ohio, yeah. and so I'd like to extend my apologies to Hal Sparks. <laughs> oh yeah. Who yeah. I will not be able to make it to your goddamn meetup in Chicago. God damn it! That would have been fun, but uh, next time we'll do it next time. Hal, yeah. come yeah. on down to Springfield. You know, you've got a big fan club here. He said lyingly. Uh -huh. <laughs> he lied. Uh -huh. well, I, there's a whole bunch of kids there who, who love um, love lab rats. Oh well, yeah. He's got lab rats fans everywhere. But I got. I got leveled up like five times my cool level mm -hmm. when when we were actually um, conversing textually because mm -hmm. I do follow his radio show and I'll drop in a comment every now and then and he'll say hello on the air. Or yes, to drift some class, or whatever. right. And the kids were like, you know him? <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're not a complete, you know, you're not loser, You're not a dork. You're not just no. an, a loser dork. You know Hal Sparks who says hi to you on the air. Yeah. Except I am a loser dork. Actually, Hal Sparks has the model for... Uh, liberal media, other than the fact he does it for free, mm -hmm. um, and, and so on, he does it from all over the country. But it really is um, smart guy has a totally different career, but is really good at this, and devotes a couple of hours a week to this because he loves it. And he thinks it's important, and I think that's that's very cool. Uh, unfortunately, he's not one of our sponsors. No, and uh, I, but our we're only going to do one of our sponsors today. We got a lot to get cover. So let's let's give this whole show over to Dukakis khakis. It's uh, sensible pants for senseless times. Michael Dukakis's line of sensible men's pants, Dukakis khakis. They're not so good for running in. No, although we do have a new uh, a new mascot for crock blockers. Just I just we don't do. want to reveal much. <laughs> don't reveal too much. I'm just saying we signed uh, up a pretty uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> Pretty amazing, uh, spa, uh, pretty amazing mascot for our uh, croc blockers. Hey man, don't wear those shoes. <laughs> don't wear those shoes. Someone sent us a picture of a cro of an alligator with a croc in their mouth. Yes, so. which is the ultimate croc blocker. Well, and because we are recording early this week, yeah. and we don't know what the next two days will bring. Although tomorrow morning, I think this is interesting. Tomorrow morning, Fox and Friends is going to have the so-called president on, yes. not live. It's no. pre-recorded. Yes. I'll bet you they're never going to do a live interview, no. phone interview with Trump ever again. Oh, I never say never, but I take your point. I think it's a... Yeah. And, and yeah. Will Tommy Laren be a significant part yeah. of that? Yeah. <laughs> What is going on with right. Trump and Tommy Laren? She got some water thrown at her by somebody. That's not nice. That's not I, nice. Uh, don't do that. And I did no. like what TV's Frank, Frank yes. Conniff said about maybe maybe somebody should uh, show her some sympathy and hand her a glass of Flint water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's not in favor of throwing <laughs> things, but. Break it. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so we today is our letter show. That's yes. the point I'm trying to make. Is we're yes, going to yes. read some of your letters. We have not had a letter show 
since Trump was elected president. I mean, yes. it's been longer than that, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I went through and pulled a few letters out of the very large pile of thank you notes I owe people. And um, I have been trying to catch up with that a little bit this week. Uh, but we're going to read some of your letters on the air. Mm-hmm. And, but first, let's do just a little bit of stuff. Sure. Right, you yeah, want to do a little stuff? Let's let's do some business. Let's do some stuff. Let's okay. talk about the news. This is this is not for the listeners out there. This is for the benefit of future generations. We're trying to figure out what the hell happened this week, right. um, and we're, we're not going to blitz you with a lot of um, stuff because, t- like for example, today um, President Stupid just exploded on Twitter. It, there was like yep. just a, a, an unbelievable amount of crazy stupid shit came out of his fingertips. Uh, not just misspelling his wife's name or stupid shit like that or making up excuses that we deliberately put in spelling errors because it makes us more palatable to the morons from Sister Fuck Arkansas who think he's a god. No, it's just it, – it's he's clearly got his foot in a bear trap. Mm-hmm. And, and he's thrashing and kicking and biting and screaming and yelling because uh, he's trapped. Mm-hmm. And all of his minions are pouring out of the woodwork. And this is a useful sorting exercise. <laughs> um, it really is. I mean, if if you are still in the middle, uh, still just yeah, it's all very loud and angry. I don't know who to believe, and tribalism is the real problem, and so on and so forth. Uh, you are part of the problem. If you are rushing to Trump's defense, you are part of the problem. So it's it's very useful to figure out whose team people are on. And now it's real clear what happens. So that that's this week. But, and drift class, I did take your suggestion uh, and add to my search terms for media. Um, yes. Quote, quote, but the Democrats. End quote. <laughs> Am I and be- I want you to know, I haven't had a chance to tell you this yet. Yes, but callers to right wing radio oh. use it all the time. Yes, they would, wouldn't they? But the Democrats. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I don't say Planned Parenthood is 100 percent evil, but the Democrats, they just want to give all the federal money to Planned Parenthood, all of it, like all the defense money and everything. And it's these crackpots. And but the Democrats is a constant. I've I've it's it's been a little disappointing because at Crooks and Liars, you know, we are a video blog. And so. And and really, it's not newsworthy that some crackpot calls it to local right wing radio and but says about the Democrats. That they all say the same fucking. But they thing. all say the same thing that 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 is their argument that that is where their brain goes. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It all is, right, it's like watching a, a a theft, like watching Ocean's Eight or watching a burglary <laughs> in a lit in a literal glass house where yeah. everyone is talking loudly with their flashlights on. We uh-huh. can see what you're doing. Yes. The, yes. The frantic thing is the glass that is keeping us from them mm-hmm. is Chris Matthews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's why aren't you turning around and asking the most important single question of your fucking career, which is the problem is not the, the Republican Party went nuts two years ago. The problem is not tribalism. The problem is not America. The problem is the goddamn Republican Party from, mm-hmm. from all 50 or 60 million of them. And how did they get that way? That's the most important question long term that we as a country need to come to grips with. And it is one that you cannot, for love nor money, get people to talk about on television. Because the answer to that question is so self-evident and so incriminating that nobody wants to lose their job over it. So we're just not going to talk about it. But we're going to talk about it on this podcast. And we're going to dial it down to very local issues in this case. About Virginia Republicans. Yeah. Well, before we do that, I do want to bring up Brendan Kelly. I, I don't know what nationality he is, but uh, sounds <laughs> all of all of the print Dutch. ads that he sends are green. Uh-huh. Brendan uh-huh. Kelly. Uh, Brendan Kelly is running for Congress in Southern Illinois. Uh-huh. He is running uh, to flip a district. Uh, the district it belongs at the moment. Mike Bost is the congressman at the moment, the Republican congressman from this particular district. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brendan Kelly is running and has won his primary and is running to flip this district. You don't want to guess what Brendan Kelly's emails are all about this week? Would you like me to, how much do I get? If I Do I get a big kiss? Yeah, you get a big kiss if you get it right. It's is, one is it issue. Health care? Nope. Nope. I'll give you I'll give you two guesses because I really want to kiss you after we record this. Oh podcast. man! Oh man! Okay, you know we share notes, so type it really slow in our notes so it looks like <laughs> it um, starts with F. A R. Fa- oh, farm. M. Farm bill. 
yeah. The okay. Farm Bill. Yeah, Speaking yeah. What of was I thinking? Issues. You know, I'm guessing it's Farm Bill because I know the sound editor. <laughs> He's going to very gently and kindly edit all this shit out, right? No, I'm not. <laughs> He's a genius. He just went right to Farm Bill. How, how does he do it, Bookout? <laughs> how the hell does he do it? So italicized sentence in Brendan Kelly's email is, this isn't rocket science. I'm just cracking up because you and I can see behind the uh, curtain on this stuff yeah. and how these letters are written and how they're tailored oh, for yeah. audiences. Yeah, it's it's. But yeah. saying, you know, these farm, and he says this in his letter, you know, these farm bills used to be bipartisan. And now it's Paul Ryan is just blocking everything. And this isn't rocket science. This is just a farm bill. We got to get this done. Such a damn shame. You know, the fools, the fool politicians in Washington won't do it. So you got to send me to Congress so we can get it done. And now here's the thing. I think people should understand Illinois geography because it's kind of important. Right. If you live in Chicago, anything south of 95th Street is southern Illinois. Right. (laughs) But actually, Southern Illinois, uh, if you look at a map, mm-hmm. Illinois goes way south of us. Like, yes, we you do. can drive yes, for, I think it's two and a half hours uh, mm-hmm. in and still be in Illinois driving south of us. And yes. we th- we think of ourselves as being south uh, in Southern Illinois because you're a Chicago. <laughs> cent- yeah. I mean, but it's central. This is central Illinois. But this is central Illinois. Right. Yeah. And uh, Illinois dips way down. Uh, you know, because of rivers, that's why. So, but the, but the farm bill is the only thing on people's mind in Brendan Kelly's district. Oh you know, yeah, that's yeah. it. It's corn and soybeans. That's what and, they've got. So, and they're getting screwed. And because, they're getting screwed. And and because, they are a Republican uh, district because yeah. they're farmers. Uh, there's there's a whole a whole lot more to talk about with that. But uh, just so you know, the local economy. In our area, this is the cornfield resistance because uh-huh. we are walking distance of a cornfield from yeah, our several, house. As a matter of fact, yes, we are. <laughs> yes, so yes, are. and soybeans and, and, and not, everything not, else. Can when do. I say cornfield, I don't mean somebody our neighbor is planting, you know, corn to eat off the cob in That's October. Adorable. I'm talking yes. like a field of yeah. corn, a field of soybeans, mm-hmm. and and right now, you know, it's baby corn. <laughs> It's just these little tiny corns right now. We, you can see them. But, uh, you, know, you know what? I bet you Brendan Kelly is not running on Blue Gal. Uh, so it's I. <laughs> impeachment. M. Impeachment. Impeachment. Yeah, he is not running on impeachment. Nope. You know who isn't running on impeachment? Any Democrats. No, nope, they're not. It is. And, we and are running that's on. That's because the, they're not. They're not liars like Trump that are going to promise something like a wall that will um, never happen. They're not also not saying that will never happen. What they're saying is let's let the the duly appointed authority do what they're supposed to do. Right. Right. And 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 they have all kinds of opinions about the incompetence and criminality and right. and and destructive path that the Republican Party has has ripped through this country. Yeah. But yeah. The, but the only people who are freaking out over Democrats not having an issue and the, no message and oh my God they're going to talk about impeachment and make all the crazy idiots run out to the polls and vote to cut, you know to cut their throats even further. The only people who are talking about that live inside the New York and Washington D.C. Beltway. Right. Nobody else is talking about it. Right. Because but since they own the cameras, that's what we talk about. Well, and on the campaign trail, the women that are running are running because health care is personal to them and their children. Which and brings all us. All of them have this story to tell. And it's mm-hmm. really important they can connect with voters that way. That's what our local Congress, the woman we're behind, right. Betsy Longer, is, is yep. running on health care. Health care. And a bunch of other stuff. That and we her child important. needed health care. Her child mm-hmm. had, a, had a serious medical emergency and needed health care. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, she is running to defend the Affordable Care Act and to expand health care uh, to everybody. You know, that's yeah. what they're that's what Democrats are running on this year. And yeah. and that is because Democrats govern. <laughs> so <laughs> let's be clear. I, I wrote this today. I said, it, you know, getting health care, secure health care to people, you have to elect Democrats. It's, yep. it's, it's that simple. And that this affects us directly and personally. Yes, it does. So you know, it does. We are waiting to hear uh, get a letter from Medicaid renewing our daughter's insurance. Uh, Mm -hmm. We are waiting to hear from the uh, healthcare.gov appeals people 
Um, mm-hmm. It's it we as you know, as those of you who have listened to us for many moons, mm-hmm. we lost uh, half of our podcast income last uh, November December um, because Amazon cat canceled our account. Uh, the money we were making from Amazon reduced our uh, Obamacare subsidy. And then we lost all that income. And so we are paying a massive amount of money for insurance at a lower right. income. We had to mm-hmm. pay back part of our Obamacare subsidy from last year mm-hmm. because of the money we made from Amazon. And uh, and that's fine. And we had right. we, we made fine. we made money last year from Amazon that reduced our subsidy. We have to pay it back. We understand that. But to then be stuck with higher health care costs because we lost our subsidy and not based on income that we no longer have, we no longer have. Right. And then being told you qualify for, for this higher subsidy now, but Oh, you can't have it because uh, it's not open enrollment. Right. So they have an appeals process. I have filled out the forms. I have been waiting three weeks. Every time the mail truck (laughs) rolls up, I am (laughs) running to the mailbox Mm -hmm. waiting for a letter from, uh, either Medicaid for the kids or, you know, healthcare.gov for us. But, and yeah. it, and I've got a letter composed to um, my senator and Tammy Duckworth if they deny us. And, you know, mm-hmm. I will appeal again and again to get, but we're paying uh, a lot. A lot. <laughs> it's, a lot. It's, it's a burden. It's a real mm-hmm. burden. And, and yeah. then I have healthcare bills from last year that I'm still paying. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it. And we are. This is. We, and we, we are lucky people. We are, <laughs> we we are one of yeah. millions and millions and millions of people who are caught in some weird yeah. trap. Yeah. Or caught in some weird circle. And this is this is all so unnecessary. It is. This is all so it avoidable. So Th- and, this is and all to have man-made. and to ha- yeah to have my fellow citizens of the United States attempting to make it worse. On elected officials make it who want to make it worse, and then admitting they made you know Tom Co- Tom uh, former HHS director Tom it wasn't Tom Cotton Tom Cotton's the other asshole with the Iran mm-hmm. deal the the Georgia congressman um, yeah I, I don't know I'm drunk on yeah I, I don't know <laughs> anyway he admitted it that yeah. you know premiums are going up because of what Republicans did with ending the the uh, mandate so. And now we have a very specific thing with Virginia, and that's what we that's what's on our list. Virginia, I wrote about this today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Virginia is set to expand Medicaid finally. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I as I said, we are very lucky people. We uh, have a Democratic state that expanded Medicaid and made it a, a you know, a p- pilot project for Obamacare, right. basically. Because Obama was from, from here, Illinois, so, right? And yeah. so and Dick Durbin is from here. So. so, and the governor was Democratic at that time. So that all happened. Um, but Virginia had to flip a lot of seats in their they they call it a House of uh, Delegates. It's not the House of Representatives, the House of Delegates. Mm-hmm. They had to flip a whole lot of seats there and flip the governorship. Uh, and the issue was. Medicaid expansion because they have a donut hole of people who are ve- Medicaid in Virginia is very restricted to people with children, to people who are something like at 40 percent of the poverty line, not 100 percent of the poverty line. So there's this hole where people are can't qualify for Obamacare because they're too poor and can't mm-hmm. qualify for Medicaid because Virginia says they're too rich and mm-hmm. Medicaid expansion will solve that problem. And everybody can see that, <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody can see that. And Republicans in the state Senate have gone along and said, yes, we see we're going to we don't want to close rural hospitals in Virginia. We don't we really need the money that the federal government's going to give. The Virginia will save money if we do this. It is the House Republicans in Virginia who don't want to be primaried. Right. Because they voted for Obamacare. Right. Who are stopping now? This is the but the, here's here's where it just gets to the point. Okay, you guys are craven, awful people. And by the way, it's Tom Price. Tom Price, thank you. They are holding up the vote on the budget. 
And this makes me laugh because I, I went and looked at local news stories in Virginia and the news in Virginia is the budget is being held up a week to 10 days. <laughs> and those of us in Illinois looking at that, when we went without a budget for two years, in a week, oh, no. <laughs> 10 days without a budget and Virginia is going to be without a budget. Oh my God. <laughs> We're, mm-hmm. Oh, honey, <laughs> you, know, yeah, you have no things. idea. Uh, but uh, they are holding up the budget process because they know that Ob- that Medicaid expansion is going to pass. And so mm-hmm. because they don't want it to pass, they're just holding up the vote. Now, Paul Ryan is doing the same thing with DACA. Yeah. He's just deciding we're not going to bring it to the floor because we don't want to embarrass Donald Trump into having to veto DACA. Yes, yes. Even we though, don't have that conversation. Even he said yeah. in an open meeting with cameras running, let's work this out and let's sign DACA. You know, he's gone been all over the map on this. Uh, the idea that you won't vote on something because you know it will pass, because you know it's common sense, because you know it's a, it will help people and it's the right thing to do. But no, we won't do that. We're not going to vote. Might, this might help people who need help with in the in the only way they can get help which is by using the tools of government. Well, and so I have to... crazier people in my party who will threaten my job if I do right. the right thing. So therefore I'm screwed. I, I I have to do the wrong thing. And well and that again that's the that's the larger story. Yeah. The, that, this is the local story but the larger story we always have to come back to this is this Donald Trump did not come out of the sky and right. corrupt the Republican party right. 2 years ago. Donald Trump is an outgrowth of the Republican Party. He is their id made manifest. He's he's what they wanted. They spent 30 years building a machine that would make a, them a Donald Trump. And now they've got him. And now you see Brett Stevens on on a hardball just tonight. And Chris, Chris uh, Matthews just handing him, you know, nails and hammers and helping him build his little lifeboat saying, isn't it a shame the Republican Party just lost its mind two years ago? And Donald Trump came in and corrupted everybody with some sort of fucking magic. And it's fine for you to say that it is completely unacceptable for a hack like Matthews to not put anyone opposed to that position right across the desk to challenge it. Right. That's where the media really just fucks us Mm -hmm. because I I don't care if you believe stupid shit. I don't care if you're a liar. I don't care if the New York times employs a whole bunch of liars. They do. I don't know why they do it, but clearly it's really important to them to put a lot of people who tell a lot of pro-conservative lies on their masthead. The problem I have is that when you set up a panel discussion to to hash these things out, you deliberately exclude the people who could point out the fact that the liar sitting next to you is lying. Now, if you want to play journalist, you know, if you want to play Chris Cuomo and play tape showing them lying, that's fine with me. If you want to do that job, that's great. But um, but Chris Matthews doesn't want to do that job. And and uh, Chuck Todd doesn't want to do that, do that job. They want two people to fight in front of them <clears throat> while they mop up the splooge afterwards. That's all yeah. they want to do. Yeah, and, and it it is a a series of years in which the mainstream media has been too polite to say lie. Right. That and too, has gotten and us too polite to say Republican. Right. And too right. polite to say Republican. They want to say Congress is doing Washington, Congress, Washington, and it's not. It's the Republican Party. All and, right, let's congratulate all of the Democrats who yes. won their primaries and yes. uh, also a uh, big hug and pat on the back to those Democrats who didn't win their primaries. We know a couple who didn't, and uh, we're sorry about that onward. And I, I do feel like, uh, uh, you know, our friend Tammy's candidate who didn't make it through her runoff, uh, that there's a place for her in public life and this yes, race absolutely. is going to benefit her. So, yeah, we want to... Uh, Tawana is her name, Katie, and I, she has a name. She did a great job and should she be did. proud of what she did. So, And anybody yeah. anybody steps into the arena, yep. you know, to, for the right reasons, mm-hmm. because they care enough to, to put themselves out there. Yep. You know what? If, if if that's what's in your heart, this is not your last, you know, this is not your last fight. Right, right. You, uh, hopefully you learned a lot. You learned sort of how to, how, how to slug it out yep. next time around, the next position that opens, because this is... You're doing the work of generations. And, we yeah, are doing you're the work needed. of generations. And, and her voice is needed. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, you have something on here about why won't Mueller lead? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, this is 
our job, as far as I'm concerned, is to tell you, our, our loyal listeners, um, and even the disloyal ones, hey, you're okay, um, that what the larger trend to look out for is. Mm-hmm. You know, anybody can tell you about the, the next step you're about to step on, the cat or the dog or the slipper that's there, and watch yourself. I, I really do feel it is part of our job to tell you, look down the field and see what's coming. Because mm-hmm. this will pass. You know, Donald Trump will eventually not be in office anymore. Right. But the the forces that made it possible for him to be nominated and for him to be elected and for him to continue being a, a massive destructive force that's ripping the guts out of our democracy, those people aren't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And those people are the ones who have to be dragged by the hair into the streets and disposed of electorally. They need to be out of office. They need to be out of the media. They have no business having a voice in our government. And that's what I think part of our job is, is to tell you what to look for. So um, I, I noticed this headline in the in the Washington Post. I don't have the headline in front of me, but it, it says something like, Mueller has the most difficult and important job in America. Right. But, but the predicate is he has to frame a report that satisfies both ends of the spectrum. Exactly. And that has been Bullshit. an argument and panel after panel is, how is Mueller going to sell this to the Trumpsters? Right. And Trump he's is, not. When everybody not. but them knows already that Trump is guilty. And, it's, and this is and I'm not saying I'm don't come out with the evidence to that. No. I'm not suggesting no. that we convict Donald Trump without evidence. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying that we had eight years of playing this rigged game. Yes. And it was called the Obama administration. <laughs> yes, yes. And it was, well, maybe if Obama led more, maybe if he were more compromising, maybe if he were this, maybe if he were that, maybe if he uses magic Green Lantern skills to magically make Republicans into not asshole people right. who weren't racist. When there was a and, conspiracy to block him every single right. step of the way. Yep. There was a conspiracy to block him procedurally, uh, it sabotage his policies, put poison pills in everything he proposed. All the while that we're playing the birth certificate game Mm -hmm. and the king of the birthers is the the man they nominated an elected president. So the idea that you're ever going to find a way to compromise with people who will tell you to your face they hate you and have no intention under any circumstances ever to compromise with you is a Washington game. So when people tell you that, you know, it's really going to be tricky because you got to balance it between no, no, the people on the right are the problem. Every time you try to pander to them, to mollify them, to say, well, their concerns need to be taken into consideration, you are playing their game. Because all you're teaching them is, oh, if I'm a big enough asshole, I get what I want. Great. Let's see what other ludicrous demands I can make, what other crackpot conspiracy theories I can spin that you are going to be forced to take half seriously. So I get half of everything I want. This is wonderful. No, no, no. This, we we already know how this game is played. Mm -hmm. And you know who's doing it? This is pissing me right off. James Comey. Yep. Yep. James Comey really, really, really wants to be, and he is now, uh, another Beltway pal, an an esteemed member of the the elite David Brooks establishment. So just today on the Twitter machine, I'm reading this by James Comey. uh, And see if you can spot where this tweet goes right off the rails. (laughs) I bet I know, but go ahead. Uh, Dangerous time when our country is led by those who will lie about anything backed by those who will believe anything based on information from media sources that will say anything. Americans must break out of that bubble and seek truth. Americans? No, fucker. It's not Americans. This is not an American's problem. This is a Republican problem. By the way, James Comey, that's your party. This is a Republican problem. The media you're talking about is the Republican media. The country, that's my country that they're screwing up. So I'd pr- appreciate it if they would stop. But the people who will lie about anything are Republicans. And we're going to who... get to our letters now, Drift Glass. But yes, I want sorry. to congratulate you yes. for your tweet this week yeah. showing the Trump Kim Jong un coin yes. and calling it shit coin. That was Thank brilliant and inspired. And you. someone replied to you with something that was also funny. What was it? I had two replies. One was uh, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> and one was one was kleptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Was Those are both very, bravo, very good. Bravo. And it well is a done. bad week for Michael Cohen. We know that. And yes. uh, yeah, I, 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 we did smack Pete Hegseth today at Crooks and Liars uh, 
for saying Kim Jong Un probably doesn't love being the guy that has to murder people all day no. long. You know, so he just wants to meet. He just wants to meet Dennis Rodman and and, and loves baseball. Yeah, so he wants normalization they, of throwing people in prison and having no right. human rights in his country. Right. Right. So uh, yeah, smack him around. All right. Yeah. Uh, Spygate is not a thing. No, it's not a thing. And so no. let's read some letters, shall we? You want to start? Let's read some letters. I'd be delighted. I'm going to start with uh, Dear DG and BG. This is from Rusty, by the way. Hi, Rusty. Hello. Hello. Thank you both so much for what you do. The passion you two convey in your words online and within your weekly podcasts are inspiring as well as informative. I'm glad that Wiser Voices led me to your website three years ago as the numerous bots and trolls were infesting Salon.com. Yeah, that does happen. Mm -hmm. Since then, I make it a point uh, daily to digest your informed opinions and news bits, along with reading up on pieces by Charlie Pierce, David Korn, Chris Hedges, Paul Krugman, Lee, Lee Papa, um, Ten Grain. Yeah, Ten Grain. Yeah, Ten Grain. And, and yeah. the different writers at Lawyers, Guns, and Money. What sets you two apart are, are, I think he means is, is how the issues affect you personally and how you both cope uh, through activities and snarky humor. When BG is stressed and sad over the many hurdles and obvious fucktardery of the ACA, I can relate and sometimes become sad and furious as well. As a freelance creative with a pre-existing condition, mm -hmm. I too have to jump over those same hurdles while biting my tongue at a tone at tone deaf bureaucrats who are just trying to do impossible jobs. Yeah, we've all been there, man. I don't feel like such a second class citizen when I know that there are others out there like me who would just who would like to just go about their days peacefully without worrying about their insurance coverage if they happen to get sick. I also like your suggestions of advocating all the, uh, all of us take time away from current events by pursuing hobbies. Nothing seem, seems quite real anymore regarding uh, policies, politics along the country's pressing uh, social issues. Your weekly podcasts give me reassurance there is a growing community of like-minded, informed individuals who all love our country and haven't lost our minds completely, nor do we feel the need to whine as hopeless victims when all seems lost. Uh, DG, I'm sure others have mentioned it, but why don't you compile your 13 years worth of material into book form? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Chris Hedges can do it, you certainly can. That's my personal motto right there. Uh, <laughs> bes besides your writing never leaves me depressed at Besides, your writing never leaves me depressed as his takes on our current society often yeah, do. Yeah, Chris Hedges is a little hard to read. It's kind of like yeah. Parable of the Sower for politics. Yeah. Not necessarily a book about David Brooks. Okay. But maybe a book detailing the media's uh, abdication of their societal responsibilities. To know. Anyway, encloses a check for 20 bucks for your efforts. Thank you so much, Rusty. And Rusty, uh, just for you, I'd like to read you. We'd like to put a little, little uh, slogan or something we picked up during the week that guides our our, uh, our podcast during the week that we both agree is kind of cool. And this line is from Legion last oh, night. Yeah. Uh, remember, a loss of meaning is not normal. Remember, so, a loss of meaning is not normal. And that was coming normal. off of like a, a speaker, right? Like the yeah. Voice, yeah, it, it, it was a voice being blasted out in the hallways. If you don't watch Legion. It's, it's like the, it's like this, uh, this, constant um pa system announcements right. about and all and all these sayings are really hilarious like yeah. if you suddenly feel that the world isn't real see your memory minder <laughs> um yeah I'm, I'm not quoting it directly but they're they're hilarious and funny and and an interesting subtext for everything that's going right. on and 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 um, not what we don't you, you gotta go watch legion if you want to understand it okay yeah. Yeah, you gotta watch legion <laughs> uh, by the way this this year uh this season the first episode i just couldn't i couldn't find my yeah. way into it it got much better after that, and it's, it's a, hell a hell of a show. show. So, All right. I, I have a letter from Brad in Dallas. Dear Mr. BG and Ms. – excuse me. Dear Mr. DG and Ms. BG, I hope this finds you well. And close, please find a contribution. I know it isn't anywhere close to making us whole. <laughs> hey, don't worry about that. We appreciate any and all amounts very, very much. I know what you're doing isn't charity, it's your job, and I'm way behind on paying you guys what's due. I promise I'll do my best to catch up. I had to put a little aside for a Geiger counter to screen my food, <laughs> but that's done now. <laughs> and I I think he's serious because he's in yeah, well. Texas and, you know, there's stuff going on. Uh, safety first, man. safe food mm -hmm. is one of my, you know, things, so... Uh, but that's done now, so I'll get right back to putting some aside for the best podcast on earth. Big Lee, Brad, uh, thank you, Brad. We appreciate you too. And there is, 
Um, there is no making us whole. Don't worry about that. No. Um, but no. I, no, I no, wanted no. to say um, something, if you don't mind, Drift Glass. There, uh, we also got a, a letter from someone who didn't have, uh, didn't sign it. But uh, we've gotten a couple of uh, checks from people who put a post-it note on the check, and it just says, keep it up. Or, yeah. uh, and this one says, I don't have espresso-based beverages, but I have a beer and a bag of chips on the train ride home on Fridays. <laughs> and uh, I know this person listens to our podcast on the train ride home um, on Fridays when we get it out on time. Yeah. <laughs> uh I, I noticed when I was doing thank you notes how much I let perfectionism get in the way of writing thank you notes and wanting to, and, yeah, and I know too. you do too. too. You just want to write I back the most graceful thank you note that you can and most personal thank you note you can write instead of sending something impersonal. Um, please don't let that get in the way of supporting the show. Put a post-it note on yeah. a check and say, keep up the good work or we love you. Or there was one letter yeah. we got that was here. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Here and then it was, uh, it was signed. Um, oh, I can't remember who it was signed by, but it was it was oh Scooter Scooter here yeah. signed Scooter and I thought Scooter Libby sent us money. <laughs> yeah, but it very was very eloquent. eloquent. Very, and very... so don't let perfectionism or feeling like you need to write us an essay on how you feel about politics. No. Some of these letters uh, that we're reading today are really eloquent, and we love getting those, but. Uh, don't let perfectionism get in the way of sending us five bucks, please. <laughs> yeah. And don't let uh, guilt get in the way of not sending us a dime. If you right. can't, if right. you're strapped, right. if you're going through something, if you're, if you're serving overseas, um, don't, don't this feel show guilty. Is our this gift is our to you. gift to exactly. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and we, we doing this anyway, but now we're doing it in front of a microphone. Uh, for money. <laughs> so that's amazing. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, this is from, uh, it's two pages, so I have to look on the second page. This is from Hi, Don. Don. And uh, Don says, Dear Blue Gal and Mr. Electrico, that's my other name. I'm assuming those are the legal names on your driver's license. <laughs> our Twitter handles are on our driver's license. Okay, and that's where I just, I just and that's, this is, because I threw it in the trash <laughs> after that. And Blue Gal just fished it out. That doesn't happen. I was notified of the existence of your pro-left, uh, quote, unquote, podcast by by a by one by a one that can't be right by one twin oh, mom twin sue yep. whom you whom you may be aware of as a long-term fan of your internet escapades all blame for any of this and any subsequent actions or consequences on this planet or in space fall squarely <laughs> on her shoulders way to take responsibility don <laughs> let it be known this should really be on a scroll of vellum. I feel like I'm making a very important announcement. Let it be known that I've enjoyed your podcast for some time now and want to state that with the heat of a thousand alien suns, because our sun isn't good enough for you, Don, right? Uh, do not ever stop with the swearing. Fuck you, Don. You're not my supervisor. I stumbled across your show via interacting with the strange uh, parentheses and possibly alien life form forms that are Stephanie Miller mm -hmm. fans. Uh, close parentheses. Most notably, the aforementioned Sue, and by way of the Bob and Chez show and the uh, Tim Cormall show, Tim. I have a very old GPS yeah. system. I have a very old. I have lots of very old things, but I don't talk about them in public. All right, there, enough editorial commenting. Read I'm, the letter. Uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm having fun. I'm fortunately stuck in the horrible blue city of San Jose, in the horribly blue Bay Area which used to have the absolute best intellectual, factual, and well-reasoned collection of AM mm -hmm. radio talk shows most in the country until ABC Disney Cumulus decided to tear, tear apart the powerhouse that was KGO Radio 810 yeah. from San Francisco. Since the destruction of the radio station and dispersal or unfortunate passing of its program hosts, I have found that the only reasonable and rational political conversations are to be found on a select few podcast vehicles, of which one of them is yours. I'm going to skip to the very end where he says, I hope you enjoy or at least find some of this stuff useful. It's my way of saying thank you for all the entertainment. Sincerely, Don. Thank you, Don. I, I was having a little fun at your expense. Well, and I, Don I hope you is realize the one that sent I mean, us all of that swag. The, the, um, he did the etching of the Internet kitties on little discs that are keychains. And he sent us the We oh, Heart yes. uh, Bernie and Hillary chopsticks. And uh, he's just a hoot, and we we love Don. So thank you for all that, Don. That's an old letter because it's Bob and Chez, and Chez passed away. Uh, we're so sorry yeah. about that. But Bob Seska, we were on Bob Seska a couple weeks ago. So, yeah. Uh, another Post-it note. 
attached to a check. James in Rochester would like to allocate his disposable income to cause the most harm. (laughs) Good for you, James. And uh, we know who you want to cause harm, whose policies you want to cause harm to. We are not advocating violence against anyone. But yes, uh, James in Rochester, we get you. Okay, your turn. I I got a little list, James, that will never (laughs) be missed. Um, Dear Drift Glass and Blue Gal, I really enjoy your podcast every week. It encloses a small contribution to help burn the lifeboats. Darn right. This is one of the podcast uh, postcards I had printed, uh, 100 for 10 bucks, and I use to berate my Republican senators and Congresswoman Fox. I'm in North Carolina, the backwater state. I <laughs> really enjoy the podcast. Both sides do it. And I can't read the signature, but I assume it's yes. sincerely meant. And the front is a wonderful uh, uh, photo of a... Of, a, of an unfurling flag uh, rampant on a black card with the words concerned voter at the bottom. Yep. And, and you can then use those to write postcards to neighbors or about ele- electing Democrats, or you can write to your congressman on those. Those are fantastic. Very cool. All right. Uh, this one is from Robin, and Robin sent me a beautiful uh, pillow cover that is a pussy hat with a pink fist in the middle of it. Uh, kind of glittery, and it's sitting on my knitting chair, which is where older we call that the Ottoman Empire because there's an <laughs> Ottoman in front of the chair, and she, the old lady kitty, gets up there, and she's far enough away from the crazy boy kitties that she gets to sit right next to the pussy hat pillow. And uh, I so appreciate that, Robin. So she included this letter with the pillow. Dear Francis, thanks again for adopting me on Twitter. I am so happy that you and Drift Class were on Bob Seska's show. Or I might never have found you. It was very refreshing to finally hear an intelligent, articulate woman who was equally passionate, horrified, pissed off about the current state of affairs in this fucked up country. Thank you for validating me. You are welcome. (laughs) My entire family thinks I'm overreacting. I'm beginning to think that the only smart one is my six-year-old grandson who says, if Donald Trump hurts my family, I will punch him in the face. (laughs) I don't condone violence, but I have to laugh. It's so depressing to be trapped in Ohio during all of this. When I look out of my front window, I am haunted by Trump campaign signs still proudly displayed in my neighbor's front yard. Mm -hmm. There are many such front yards here. Ooh, at this point, podcasts like yours are the only thing keeping me sane. Uh, And then she includes this pillow and says, hopefully you can look at this from time to time and smile, knowing that you make a difference in people's lives. Thanks again for all you do, Robin. Thank you, Robin. I included that letter because of your six-year-old grandson. That story (laughs) made me giggle. Okay. Your turn, Uh, Griffin. My my next letter is on a very impressive letterhead. Mm. Uh, Makes me feel like I'm being served some sort of subpoena or legal action. (laughs) Um, I hope you didn't slip this into the pile, uh, some sort of no, divorce notice, because no. I'd be very upset. <laughs> no, the, um, this looks legit. It's typed and everything. Damn. And signed. Real good job. This is from Jim. And Jim writes, Dear Drift Glass and Blue Gal, I've been a fan of your show for some time now. I listen to the podcast during my lengthy commute home from work on Friday evenings. After dinner and a drink, I will typically listen for a second time with my loving husband. We've been using the podcast as a form of quiet time, a chance for us to unwind from a stressful week in the era of Trump. As a fan of the show, I appreciate that one of your goals is to give liberals a vocabulary to engage in informed political debate. I'm ashamed to report that I recently fell completely flat, uh, flat footed. Hmm. I was sitting in the food court at my local mall. An elderly, an elderly man licking an ice cream cone approached my table and sat down directly across from me. Like a good liberal, I was listening to Stephanie Miller in my earbuds, but I removed them and said hello to the stranger. He asked me what I thought should happen with, quote, all this Robert Mueller nonsense. I replied confidently, saying that I know what should happen with all of the Donald Trump nonsense. Good for you, Jim. Good for you, Jim. But overall, the discussion did not actually go well. No matter uh, no matter where I tried to direct the conversation, he had at least two insane talking points. WikiLeaks, emails, the private server, Benghazi, uranium. Naturally, he was willing to condemn Donald Trump's locker room talk because both sides do it. Mm. On the other side, you have Hillary Clinton and all that rap music, he said to me. 
Wow. Admittedly, I'm not a fan of rap music, but I was unaware that Hillary Clinton had apparently released a rap album <laughs> or was somehow otherwise responsible for modern rap lyrics. Everyone knows it was Tipper Gore. Uh-huh. As soon as he said the bit about rap music, I realized that I was interacting with a bigot who assumed that because I was white, Bunch Table was a safe space for him to sp- spout off about the problems with the inner cities, mm-hmm. quote unquote. Mm-hmm. All that realization washed over me. My vocabulary failed. I was overwhelmed by the thought that over 60 million other people in this country voted the same way he did and probably for the same reasons. I just could not think of anything to say. I pretended that my break was over, packed up my uneaten salad, and walked back to work. In the four days since I've th- this interaction happened, I can't think of anything I could have said that would have made that conversation any different. My husband thinks that I'm totally overthinking it. He says that only a crazy person would stop eating an ice cream cone to argue Trump Russia with a complete stranger who's also wearing earbuds and eating a mm-hmm. salad. Listen to your husband, dude. He's right. I'll try harder next time. I enjoy the podcast immensely. Your work is important and closed as a contribution. Yours truly, Jim. What What well, would you say to Jim? I think Jim did a great job with the all the Donald Trump job. nonsense. I think that was <laughs> great. Yeah. I think I think you learned a valuable lesson about wrestling with a pig there, Jim, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is it doesn't do any yeah. good. Um, it took me a long time to learn this, um, and I just now freely insult conservatives um, without any regard to whether or not I'm going to persuade them. Because I figure if you're if you're that way at this point in history, you've sort of sold your mm-hmm. soul. You're not going to change. Mm-hmm. You're not going to do it. So I might as well just have some fun playing handball yeah. off you. Um, and I start by I've started just saying um, Raymond, what's his name is the nicest kind of <laughs> uh, because you're talking to a robot. You're talking to someone who you're talking to Hal 9000 yeah. from 2001. Uh, there's nobody home there. There's no one who, who can be persuaded. Uh, the only the only thing I would uh, change in your interaction, because you did the right thing. There's nothing you're going to do to change that person. Nothing. And that's the hardest thing for liberals to admit. And you didn't, you didn't, that you I, know, do a Tommy Lair and throw a drink in his face, you know, so no, there, there's no, no point, right? But I, I, I did a, I did a post this week on the um, compendium illusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I pulled the, uh, this thing by Ameri- the, a guy who called himself American dad um, uh, from nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but during the you know during the run up to uh, to Barack Obama being president, um, this guy was a former conservative, and and you couldn't tell it was written nine years ago. It could have been written nine minutes ago. Seriously. But his his idea was, I will simply compile an unimpeachable list of reasons why you have to stop being racist assholes, conservatives. I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. I want you to come home because you're you're crazy people and you're lying. You're hypocrites, and you need to stop. Please, for fuck's sake, stop. And it it went around the internet a million times. And everybody I know emailed it to Crazy Uncle Liberty. Um, the guy in the food court, I'm sure, got a copy from whoever he gets emails of life. And it made no difference at all, mm-hmm. at all. Didn't change a single mind as far as I can tell. Because these people are never going to change. It offends our liberal sensibilities. And we still have entertained entertain this illusion that if we just found the right combination of words, that they would somehow see the light would sort of break through and 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 enter their life and they could and we could at least have a conversation that wasn't one side saying one side batshit crazy mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. never ever going to happen so you need to let it go the difference is if you're arguing in front of someone else mm-hmm. that's where you can have a lot of fun yeah if you're arguing to persuade a third party or an audience then the strategy should be just nuke the guy mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. just make him look dumb mm-hmm. i mean there because there's nothing else you're gonna you're gonna be able to do but if you're attempting to persuade that person to change their mind, in my experience, and my experience goes back decades, um, it never works. The, the, it simply the, never there works. There is a level of brainwashing where it, perhaps someday something will break through. And I happen to think $4 gas breaks through. Uh, <laughs> you know, there are things that are just so personal yeah. to people or that really affect them. And they go, oh, no, I don't want that. And and we've seen a little bit of that on Twitter. I didn't vote for this, Trump. I just wanted the wall. Right. <laughs> and he didn't want right. war with North Korea. You know, I didn't vote for that. Well, you know, duh. <laughs> I wanted the ice cream cone, not I the want... crazy old man. Right. Well, I'm sorry. Right. It comes as a package. Right. Right. Can, can I mention one more thing sure. before we move on? Um, this is by way of giving you vocabulary, I hope. To, to wrap around the situation and make it a little more understandable. What you are watching mm-hmm. is the 
40 years of Republican paranoia and monster making uh, feedback on itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Republican Party, Republicans and conservatives and all the people who who've led us to this moment have for decades survived by lying to themselves and making up conspiracy theories about why those lies fall apart. Yep. And then that conspiracy theory falls apart and they make up another one mm -hmm. and another one and another one. And, and at some point, if it's your money, eventually you run out. Right, right. You eventually, <laughs> there's no more money to send to the crazy preacher, so you stop sending money to the crazy preacher. But Republicans, because they're so deep in this shit now, they, there's no way for them to back out of it now. Mm -hmm. They can't admit mm -hmm. they've been an idiot for, for their entire adult life and that people like me were right all along. They can't admit that. They'd rather die. They'd rather burn the country down. So what they're stuck doing is inventing bigger and crazier conspiracy theories mm -hmm. to explain where the last conspiracy theory failed. And, and to the point, I'm grateful that a lot of people today are calling out this Spygate thing as just another yeah. con. That's all it is. That's yeah. all it is. But but they have re-engineered the, the conservative – digestive system mm -hmm. so that it can only process lies now. Right, right. You can't – it will it'll right. vomit out truth. It will vomit up facts. It, you can't digest it anymore. It's, it's not – they're not able to do it. And what has happened is they've elected someone who believed all that shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he came into office going, well, Barack Obama was a tyrant and Barack Obama wasn't born here. And Barack Obama used the Justice Department to punish his political enemies and murder people and got and sell uranium to Russians. And God knows what – everyone knows Barack Obama was a lawless, un-American monster and because that's what you get to be when you're president. Mm -hmm. And so he arrived in the White House assuming all the crazy shit he heard on Alex Jones' show was mm -hmm. true. And then proceeded to behave as if that were just normal. And now he's getting caught up in the fact, no, it's not normal. No, that that's actually not what happened. Barack Obama did not behave in that way. That was all shit you made up to justify your racism and ignorance, you son of a bitch. But of course, there we go again. We can't admit that. We can't admit that we were completely fucking wrong about Obama. So now we have to invent the largest conspiracy theory of all, which is everyone's in on it. Justice Department, media, the FBI, liberals, everybody, everyone who isn't a conservative is in on some massive conspiracy. Against that Donald they Trump know about. that only they Against know Donald about, Trump. right. And the way they know about it is because they heard it on, you know, at two in the morning from some crackpot on a right wing radio. They trust that voice. They don't trust anyone else. Yep. So that's what you're watching. You're watching a, a monster machine that Republicans built, that Republicans engineered, the Republicans paid for. They were perfectly content with the with the product of it. Now the entire thing is having is stuck in a massive feedback loop where they can't stop it. And the people in the media who made a shitload of money about playing the both sides game don't know what to do about right. it. Because if they call out the machine, they lose their job. So they, they're calling out <laughs> themselves and their history. Yep. Yeah. Yep. OK, I have a letter here. I have a letter here from Anne. And says, Dear Drift Glass and Blue Gal, thank you so much for being a light in my week here in Red, Texas. I discovered you in April just before a trip to Utah to visit my family and run a half marathon. I must have listened to 10 of your podcasts that weekend as a distraction from my conservative family. My mom will not <laughs> listen to the Hamilton soundtrack I sent her because an audience booed Mike Pence. Wow. Uh, I made my way back to the election and have listened to several podcasts around the time you guys got married. Oh, so that was August of 2011. That's, you're, mm -hmm. you're listening to old shows. That's nice. Wow. Uh, you are great company on my Saturday morning runs. If I don't get a chance to listen Friday night, many podcasts have been listened to twice. I'm a single 59-year-old mom of four grown children, grandmother to four young kids, one girl and three boys and now enjoy being a mom to five small dogs. I can't tell you how many tears I have shed since Trump was elected. Heartbreak and fear. Having your podcast to listen to is helping me stay hopeful and sane. Please know that you mean so much to those who are out here. Thanks for giving us hope and reminding us that we aren't alone or crazy. Sincerely, Anne. That's correct. That is, That's right. <laughs> you are reminding me of the same thing. And the reason I included yep. that letter was that reason. The reason we do this show and the reason we love you guys so much is you remind us that we're not crazy, that we're not alone, that we uh, can do something to make the world a better place in spite of everything. San you were you were helping bring sanity to my life as well. So thank you. Okay. I have one more letter. Yeah. 
And it's from a, a friend of the family. Yes, a friend of, of your family's, right? Yeah. Yes. But we opened a box today, and out came a, a Coca-Cola bottle from the 60s, I swear to God. Uh-huh. And I thought, okay, what sort of threat is this? Is this some sort of message? <laughs> yeah. Is there a letter in there with cut up letters from magazines? No. But no. And this was mailed to the podcast address, right? Yeah. 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 Well, yes. Yeah, so several members of my family are aware that I do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, dear GGBG, I will not discuss how long this family heirloom has been sitting in a box waiting to be mailed. No, don't ask. I will not tell you. Well, uh, Drift Glass's mom. And I were on the road. We talk about many things. My sister getting possessions, possession of a certain coveted item from under the sink being one of them. Mm-hmm. DG, please accept this hopefully worthy substitute. It has been lurking under my sink for quite enough decades and would probably still be there if we hadn't needed to replace the kitchen faucet. Uh-huh. May it sprinkle, sprinkle your life with blessings or help with the ironing, whatever the need be. Here's a donation for the tip jar and a donation for the GoFundMe. Could you use some stamps? How about a McDonald's gift card? All the above. Uh, thank you both for helping make sense out of the insanity and keeping us informed and entertained. Blessings, love, and all good things, Michelle. Uh, and this is the the ironing bottle, right? That you put the water in for the iron. It brought back wonderful memories. It, it's a Coke bottle that had used to have a cork with a little sprinkler uh-huh. on it. Um, but see, I think you've got that water. cork with the sprinkler. I think that was sent earlier. I think I, I think do. It's in a box I think it's in the bedroom. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like the key master and the, yeah, you, know, right. you, you don't want to bring it's a things search to game now. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Once I knew this is how, mem- this is how, how memory yeah. works and why the liberal superpower is memory. Yeah. Uh, once I knew what it was, yeah. I could smell the starch oh, that my mom yeah. used to put on. Clothes. Yeah. I could smell the, the hot steam coming uh-huh. off of the, the shirts and pants uh-huh. you would iron. I could hear the creak of the ironing board opening up. Uh, it all came back, all came back in one big shot. So it, memory is an amazingly powerful tool. And I can understand why conservatives are terrified of it. Because once you start remembering shit and remembering what really happened and how things really went down, um, it all falls apart. So it's a wonderful, perfect, sweet gift. And it's, you know, to the outsider, it's just a Coke bottle. For me, it's my childhood. So thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that. Is there anything else you want to talk about before... Before we sign off, we're done. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hope everyone has a good Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we love you. Giuliani, nah. Fox and Friends, nah. Really, no. I, I mean, we're we're gonna start packing the house up a little bit and, and hitting the road. It's it's just a lunatic day. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. But here's the thing: we never know what tomorrow brings anymore. That's so, right. You know, we all we just like to say each week we post to our Facebook page and website. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Remy. Remy is a young kitty, and we think will be a big boy when he grows up. He's got big tomcat potential. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. And Drift Glass, we need to do these letter shows more often, I think. And can I tell you this? Yeah. At my local post office. Yeah. Uh, a, a postal union person who I know uh-huh. asked me how the podcast was going. Ah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. Don't screw with us, man. We have the the. The U.S. Postal Service at our at our backs. That's we got their backs, great. they got our backs. That's yeah. just awesome. Don't yeah. forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. So slap a Post-it note on a check or go pay, go the PayPal route. Uh, you, we have GoFundMe. We have Patreon. There are lots of different ways that you can drop us five bucks, and we appreciate it. Approximately 1% of our listeners do support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, both our PayPal and postal information and uh, our Patreon. All the information you need to make an easy donation is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are absolutely furious that they've been unblocked by Donald Trump. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. 
Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.